Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming the brother of Katie Seagal and the son of legendary director Boris Seagal, Joey Seagal. Joey Seagal, of course, played Gun in that cult classic, The Return of Swamp Thing. And I'm having him on the show today to talk about that. He's done so many other great things. He was in the classic miniseries, Basada. Uh, he was in another miniseries, World War Three. He was in Quiet Cool, uh, Out for Blood, The Chase, Barbed Wire, The Hidden. Lots of great stuff. He also did um, Elvis and Nixon because he's a big Elvis fanatic. And I'm having him on the show today to talk about all that stuff. And I can't wait. I just loved him in the Return of Swamp Thing. He's so great in that, playing that gung-ho, cocky military guy. And he's so great in that. So I'm going to have him on. He's going to be my like third or fourth guest from the movie. And it's going to be fucking awesome. So yeah, here is my interview with Joey Segal. Hello. Hey, Joey. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, Tommy. How are you, buddy? Good to hear your voice. <laughs> I'm great. How are you? Really good, considering uh, all of this COVID-19 stuff. But I'm in a, uh, luckily, I've, I've got a nice place on quarantine in, in the Pacific Palisades in California so much. Oh, that's good. Yeah, over here um, in Reading, it's uh, pretty... It's pretty foggy out, and it's on and off rain uh, after a whole week we had of heat last week. <laughs> oh, good. Well, that's, a, that's good for this. You know, it's good, good to get hot. Yeah, hopefully it'll, it'll get sunny again in the next week or so. But yeah, um, I think it's going to start raining down here in L.A. too for the next couple of days, but it's definitely hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's how it gets over there. But um, this is such a great honor. Thank you for taking the time today. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor for me also. <laughs> My pleasure. So, uh, going back in time, um, your father, of course, was Boris Segal, who directed many classic TV series in that Charlton Heston movie, The Omega Man. Uh, uh, did you gravitate toward acting early on in your childhood? Uh, no, I, I didn't um, until I got out of high school. Um, my parents didn't really want us to be in the business until then. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened to me was uh, right after high school, I really, you know, I was kind of a ski. I wanted to be a ski instructor. I wasn't, uh, didn't have a lot of things. And then um, in uh, uh, the uh, October, after I graduated, when I was 18, I used to, uh, my dad had encouraged me because he was a director, mm -hmm. some acting classes. So I said, hell, why not? I was a little bit, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Luckily for me, it was 1975. And I mm. ended up at Reese Strasberg in Hollywood. So I was there for about a month, and I thought it was kind of nuts. And this is kind of the story of how I decided to be an actor. Uh -huh. But I, I liked it. It was 1975. It was before people knew what people were making money and their salaries. It was kind of, you know, just about the acting. But I, I didn't know much about it at that point. But at least Strasberg for about a month. And uh, these two guys, uh, Lee Strasberg comes down and he says, let me have these two guys come and talk to you. It's a director and actor. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know their names at the time. So uh, we're sitting there. And, um, I was about 18 years old. And I, was, uh, I used to like to, I wasn't a big drinker, but I used to like, I, and I still do like to smoke marijuana, pot, grass. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're, we're at this Strasberg and we're waiting for these guys to show up. And we've got 100 students in the classroom. And me and a couple of guys go out to the parking lot to uh, spark a doobie, you know, because we're a little bored. You know, that's what we're doing. So as we're smoking this joint, these two guys from parking, we pull up in their car, and they come running out of the car. Mm -hmm. They smell the grass. They go, oh, that smells good. We go, hey, do you want some? They go, no, we're late. We got to get up some money. They walk up the stairs, and they go in, <laughs> and we go, hey, maybe those are the guys for weeks. We go back in the class, and the two guys that were outside that were talking and said, the um, we're the two guys that were going to talk. And uh, and I always thought they were cool because, to me, I was kind of a pothead, and they, they to me, they gave the signal that they like pot, too, so to me, everybody was cool, okay? 
Yeah. So they started, so they started talking, and they said, oh, yeah, this is the place to be. And, I, you know, I, I didn't really know who they were. And I, but they were really nice guys. And I said, yeah, this is where you want to go. So about two weeks later, my dad goes, listen, I want to take you to a movie at the Academy. They're screening this movie. I think you'll really like it. You'll really relate to it. So he's talking to me on, on the drive to, the, to see the movie. And uh, we get, uh, and I tell him about these two guys that had showed up and they talked and it was very encouraging. I was really kind of, you know, I thought this was great. Mm-hmm. The movie we're going to see is a movie called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It just come out. <laughs> so the movie starts and the guy that comes out is Jack Nicholson. Yeah. First thing that he shows up, I look at my dad and I go, Dad, that's the guy that came and talked to us. That's the guy. And, <laughs> I, and then I watched the movie. And I said, oh, my God, this is, this, is, this is so what I want to do. And it kind of changed everything for me. And not only the fact that I seen, and the, and the director was Roman Polanski. <laughs> but they had made this connection because at that time I was just kind of into smoking grass and those these kind of surfer skiing kids. But because they had made that connection with me, it kind of turned me on to the whole business in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. They said they were cool, and then and then and that that so that's how kind of it all started for me. But uh, I always there was that moment where I said, "Wow, I really love this thing. Really uh, sound what I want to do." <laughs> all because you spoke pot with Jack. <laughs> yeah, totally, exactly. All because he said, "Hey, that sounds good," and because and, and to me, in my mind, that that made him cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and and then and that and that opened me up. I mean, wow. I'm just honest. I'm just being honest here. Oh, that's that's great. That's incredible, man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what started. And, 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 then, and then, you know, it wasn't about trying to make as much money as Jack. It was trying to figure out how he got that great technique, how he did that style. You know, it was yeah. trying to find the best acting school. It was about trying to find the best voice teacher so that you could... Um, maybe do some performances that were, you know, your version of how great he was. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, Absolutely. Was, was the, you know, five years later, the actors were uh, more motivated, I think, by salaries. Yeah. Oh, God, this guy's making a million, two million dollars. And it's too bad because I think it, it, it messed up the uh, artistic um, the work, really, of, of a lot of the actors at that time. But in, so in the seventies, what I'm saying it was more about the work than than I think uh, all this money that people are involved in now and such. Yeah. Uh, so the last thing you would want to do is be on a TV series and play the same part for ten years. Oh yeah. I wanted to play a lot of different parts. I, 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 that's what I always wanted as an actor, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I think Burt Reynolds started that. I think he was like the first actor to make four or five million dollars. Yeah, or, or, or I think uh, 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 Bruce Willis wanted money, made twenty million dollars for a picture. So it just got really, really became ridiculous. Everything, you know, blew up everything. So then all of these big actors were getting twenty million, and everybody supporting them were getting a scale plus ten. You know, it was not yeah, more, not, not the next thing. yeah, it's crazy. I, I was reading um, when you were at the uh, Lee Strasberg Institute. Uh, Denzel Washington was in your class. No, that was when I went from Lee Strasberg to ACT in San Francisco, which is an American Conservatory Theater. It's kind of like the American version of RADA. It's a, a repertory company with an acting school around it, and they take about uh, 40 people a year. Mm-hmm. They train. And uh, as I was paying my tuition, the guy right behind me, dressed in cowboy boots and uh, without a dime in his pocket, was Denzel Washington. You know, we became <laughs> great friends. Uh, over the year, my first play, uh, Moon Children, was opposite with him, and we were great buddies at that time. We, were, you know, we kind of lost contact now, but back then, before you know, we were anything. We would go to movies, and and now we get a first play. We were, we were, uh, we were partners, like we were good friends. Yeah. Was anybody else in your class that went on to become big? Oh well, then I went to uh, a class called well, also Delroy Lindo was in that class at ACT. Then mm-hmm. I went back to L.A. and I got involved with a teacher named Peggy Fury. Oh, yeah. Okay, and, and when I first got into Peggy Fury's class, there was about 15 people. I'd always heard it from, from Strasburg, but I heard she's a great teacher. I wanted to try Two of those people were the 
unknown, one was the unknown Sean Penn, mm -hmm. one was Meg Tilly, another actress. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and it wasn't really that big of a class. And then what happened was um, Sean did uh, Fast Times of Rich on High and Bad Boys, and he got an uh, article, in, and, and Peggy was my great teacher. We had become very close by that time. Mm -hmm. Johnny got an article and said, you know, that, uh, he, said, he said, where did you study as an actor? And he said, oh, we just studying in Katie Fury. Well, after that, there was everybody. I, I did maybe five or six different uh, scenes with Michelle Pfeiffer. I was mm -hmm. working with Laura Dern. Uh, Nicholas Cage was in the class. Eric Stoltz. I mean, you couldn't believe the people, that, the roster of actors that were in this class. Yeah. Meg Ryan came from there. It was all in this one class. Wow. This is in the early 80s. That's amazing. I didn't... Yeah, it, it was wild. Was wild. I, and I was kind of like the teacher's pet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it was pretty fun. It was great. I mean, yeah, it was a good time. And you, he was a great teacher. We for fun. May she rest in peace. Yeah. I, I've talked to a few people who uh, took her classes. Uh when did you uh, take uh, Stella Adler's script uh, script analysis class in New York? Oh God, uh, 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 around that time, um, actually, I took it in L.A., and then I went to New York and I took it there, too. So it was all around the early 80s, right around there, was when I started with uh, Stella. I started studying on 75. I studied acting for about 10 years, from about 75 to about 85, with different teachers, different voice teachers. I went to Strasbourg, ACT, Stella Adler, you know, I wanted to get all the good ones. Mm -hmm. so right. My favorite was uh, that I really connected with, with two. There was a, a teacher named Dominic DeFazio, mm -hmm. Lou Strasbourg, and Peggy Fury, and her husband, Bill Trailer. I would always consider my, my great mentors. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Yeah. One of your earliest uh, roles, uh, you got to be in the epic TV miniseries Masada. I got to work with my dad on. Uh, yeah, that was just an amazing experience. Um, we got, to, you know, went to Israel, and um, you know, I had a small part, but I got to be around. You know, my dad would come in the and Peter O'Toole was, you know, giving great speeches, or mm. you know, it was just a great, great, great experience for me as an actor and as a person. You know, yeah. Great. Did you learn a lot from Peter O'Toole? Production? Uh, yeah, I was there for uh, pretty much the whole thing. Three months there and a couple months back here, so it's great. Great, great, great. Nice. Then then you did another miniseries, World War Three. Yeah, that was a little unfortunate. That was the one that my father passed away on. Mm -hmm. And had a very tragic accident. And uh, yeah, that was not great. Yeah, there's some legends in it, though Rock Hudson, Brian Keith, yeah. Catherine yeah, Hellman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert Prosky. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. They all wanted to work with my dad. And, uh, you know, what happened was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. But I don't really want to talk about that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries. <clears throat> uh, then, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, then uh, you did an action movie called Quiet Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very fun. That was one of the early New Line Cinema movies. We were up in Santa Cruz for about three or four weeks. And uh, that was great. I love marijuana growers in uh, Northern California. And uh, I did a couple of movies with New Line. The early, I was kind of like their substance guy. Mm -hmm. I had a character named Toker in Quite Cool, which was the big pothead. And then they did a movie called The Hidden. And I'm the drunk that, that uh, picks up this girl and then she, she turns out to be an alien. And she has, we have sex in my car and she kills me while we're at sex. I said, hey, man, I'm born for that part. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I did a couple of fun things for New Line uh, Cinema in the early in the early days. Because uh, what, what happened was they had this casting director, Annette Benson, mm -hmm. really yeah, believed me and, and helped me. And, and then she left, and then I did, kind of lost contact with the company, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, she casted uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and all the sequels. Yeah, all, all, all those early uh, New Line 
cinema work. She was a great casting director, but she just, you know, left the business. I think she's working as a banker in Las Vegas, but she was one of the great casting directors that believed in me, and, you know, it's just, uh, boy, we're still with more of them. Yeah. 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 How, how was working with uh, James Remar? Uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, the funny story was quite cool. Was what happened was at one point, Nick Cassavetes uh, played the, the main bad guy. He was supposed to, in the original script, have a, be always using a yo-yo. <laughs> and, and, and at one point, he's supposed to strangle me with a yo-yo, okay? Yeah. And, and, and the first day of, the, of him trying to do the yo-yo, it was just very difficult. It's hard, you know, yo-yo you have to do for years and years to really be good at it. So, so we were, we're on the set, we're going, okay, what is his character going to do to my character when, you know, he wants to hurt him? Yeah. So we were always talking, oh, maybe I'll punch him in the nose and this and that. So one day we're, the director, Nick and I, a couple of actors talking about it. We're, running, we're right outside of James Remar's trailer. Because he was always in there reading and, you know, keeping to himself a little. And we're talking, talking, all of a sudden, I know where we hear this voice that says, why don't you put a cigarette out in his ear? Okay. <laughs> Uh, everybody goes, yeah, that's great, that'll work, right? So, we go, we, we film this thing, and then when they do the test screenings of the movie, my character is everybody's favorite character, Toker. And I'm, I'm like a, a supporting character, but, you know, it's voted that I'm the character. So they want to expand my part a little bit after production. So they decide they need a close-up of when they put the cigarette in my ear, okay? Yeah. So what they have to do is they have to put A smoke in your ear and B smoke on the cigarette. When they put it together, it smokes. They want to see smoke coming out of my ear. And then they have a guy with like a, a water thing right right off camera because if it starts hurting, I have to go, hey, it's burning, it's burning. And it has to start, you know, flushing me with water. So it's kind of wild. It's like, you know, they're, they're trying to create smoke out of my ear by putting on a cigarette. It starts to burn a little bit. But we got the shot. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, you mentioned uh, before the hidden. Um, I've had yeah. I've had Jack Shoulder on. What was he like to work oh, with? Oh, well, Jack was great. He was great. And that that was a really you know that was a one day night shoot on Hollywood Boulevard. We had all the clothes down on Las Palmas, and but it was great. Those you know those 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 were really fun parts to do. It was all you know gone on. They cut and made everybody start laughing, and we oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Like this, that's good. You know, it was all good time. Mm -hmm. And then comes the role <clears throat> that I always think about with you, and that's the role of Gun in the Return to Swamp thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was great. That was a uh, um, we had done. Uh, we were out in Savannah, Georgia, for five weeks. It was like summer camp, and uh, you know, we just had so much fun. Heather Locker was super. The whole cast and crew, the director, everybody was. You know, go along great. We all had hotels. I have a kind of a funny story I can tell you about it. Go ahead. <laughs> um, well, when we first got to Savannah, I had, uh, you know, grown my hair long and grown the goatee for the park. Right? I don't know I have a goatee. And every time I walked around town, I was getting stopped by the police. I'd walk a couple blocks. The next thing I know, the Savannah police would stop me. Who, who are you, man? And they searched me. I mean, it was, you know, getting kind of weird. So after about three nights, um, Heather and I weren't working. We decided we were going to go out and have dinner together. Mm -hmm. She was staying in another hotel, and I was in my hotel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm walking over to her hotel. Sure enough, the cops come right behind me. Who the hell are you? And I know I've been staying here for about five weeks. So I, I figure i got to get in good with these guys. So I go, oh, I'm, my name is Joey Segal. I'm working on this movie, Return of the Swamp Thing. So the two police officers go, oh, we were just talking about that movie. Isn't that with the Heather Locker? And I say to them, hey, yeah, actually it is, but I'm on my way to go pick up Heather right now. We're going to mm -hmm. go to dinner. I go, would you give me a ride? I'll, I'll introduce you to them. You can meet them. And, you know, so they're, they're starting to buddy up to me. But they're also thinking I'm lying to them. Like, they don't believe this is going to happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we get to the hotel. They drive me there. I give her Robbie. I call Heather. You know, they're going, oh, my God. She comes down. And they're freaking out, these two police officers. So they go, well, where do you guys want to go to dinner? And they drive us to, like, the nicest restaurant in town. They go, no, listen, when you're through with dinner, call us, and we'll pick you guys up. We go, really? We go, they go, yeah. So after 
there, I call them up, and they, uh, uh, they're right there. They go, uh, by the time I hang up the phone, they're at the table. They've been waiting outside the whole time. So they go, hey, do you guys want to go cruise around Savannah with us? You know, we'll take you on a cruise. We go, yeah, sure, why not? So it's Heather Lock there and I and two police officers, and we start cruising around Savannah with busting craft dealers. And we got pictures. We, get, we use all the Polaroid film in Savannah of them arresting me, or, you know, showing how they were frisking me. And, <laughs> and then I tell the story about how I told them about Heather and that. And then my good friend. And then the rest of the time I was in Savannah, every time I would see these guys, hey, come on over for barbecue, and all police were driving everywhere. It was good. <laughs> So that's how I got him. Oh man, that's awesome! Yeah, I, I watched this movie so many times growing up. I could still quote it from start to finish, you know. And you all, well, a lot of the a lot of the lines were my own. Mm-hmm. When I say, uh, you know, I would they were really open. I would come up with when I say uh, turn them into guacamole. I had uh, you know the, the original original line was mulch, but I wanted to use guacamole because I just felt there were better words. Um. You know, a lot, you know, I, they, 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 the one scene that I have with uh, Monique Gabriel, where we uh, compare the scars, they let me write that whole scene because they wanted they gave me more in the, in the movie and things, you know, so it was really cool. Yeah, it always reminded me of when they're comparing scars and jaws, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, that, that's what it was supposed to be kind of like. Yeah, you, you had good chemistry with her, too. Yeah, yeah, she was really sweet. That's really good. Yeah, Jim doesn't even know where she is, and she was in, like, I don't know, four or five of his movies, you know. I know, I know, I know. But I, I see such a Jim on Facebook. I still, you know, been just get in touch with him a lot. Yeah, I've, I've talked to him on here and stuff, and, of course, I'm always commenting on his stuff and everything. I, lo- I love it when <laughs> you chase Heather Locklear, and, you know, you tell her that you had 10 years of training in Okinawa, and then... Okinawa! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. Then she kicks you, and then she gets in the elevator and leaves, and you're like, come on, baby, we were just starting. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, it was a fun thing to do. It's, it's wild. It's, it's literally 31 years ago, I think, from right now, it's on the lease that just turned or something. Yeah, it's about 31. It's, that, you know, it's nice to have the movies that people are still seeing that you took back then. Yeah. Was Dick Durock a good guy? Well, Dick was the greatest, you know, and you, you kind of felt bad for him because he was, this was before CGI, so this is a, a big guy, you know, in a, in a huge rubber suit, in a swamp, in the heat, and I mean, he was losing 10 pounds a day mm-hmm. to keep him hydrated, but he was he was a super trooper. He was like old school stuntman actor, uh, I can take it, you know, for the cowboy kind of a guy. Yeah. I, I talked to... Him. Dick was great. Yeah. I talked to Daniel Taylor, the fat kid. Oh, yeah. Daniel is the best. I'm on Facebook with him now. And if you know Daniel now, and if you could have known him back then, if you see what he grew up in, it's just so funny for me. It's just great. It's just hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know how Daniel is. He's great. I mean, he's a great guy. He's very super intelligent, uh, very artistic, and mm-hmm. nice social circle. Or he's, you know, very, very interesting to follow him on Facebook. He is, yeah, he's very smart. I, I, I noticed when I talked to him. How was um, working on Out for Blood? Oh, with Don Wilson, that was great. Out for Blood was with Don Wilson and... Uh, 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 Sherry Shattuck? Oh, yeah. oh, no, 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 that was Andrew. I did a couple of movies with, with uh, Don. Mm-hmm. They also did one with Don and Andrew's Clay Cole, whatever it takes. But Out for Blood, that was great, yeah. I totally like doing that. It was, you know, another bad guy. Mm-hmm. As Sherry Shattuck, I just had her on the show. How was she to work okay. with? I didn't work with her. I don't, I don't think I had any scenes with her. I was I was, I was, was kind of on, on that show uh, with all the bad guys. We were always in the drug dens, and, you know, they broke my leg and threw all this stuff, you know, evil stuff to me. Mm-hmm. You did uh, The Chase with Charlie Sheen and Christy Swanson. How was that? Yeah, that was great. That was really fun. They flew me down to Houston, and... Uh, it was great, you know, really good, uh, good times. Uh, I, I didn't work with Charlie, but I worked with Christy, and I actually did a couple things with Christy. I also did a TV show called O'Hara with her once, so I'd already known her, mm-hmm. and we were already friends. So yeah, that was really fun. And also to uh, Ray Wise. Also, I, I worked with Claudia Christensen. Claudia was the alien in the Hidden. 
Yeah, and also Ray Wise from the first Swamp Thing was in it. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of weird how that all worked out, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Ray was a super nice guy, man. Ray was good. Yeah, I met him at a convention once. He was a very nice guy. Yeah. How about working uh, with Pamela Anderson on Bob Wire? Um, well, you know, I didn't get that big of a part. Bob Wire was originally going to be directed by Adam Rifkin, mm-hmm. who directed The Chick. At the time, I was playing Elvis Presley in a play at the Geffen Playhouse. Uh, the Steppenwolf Theater Company had uh, made their debut, and I had been cast in a play by Steve Martin called Picasso with the Le Pen et Gilles. And it was the uh, first production, it was his first play, and it was the L.A. debut of Steppenwolf Theater Company, and they cast me to play Elvis Presley. And uh, I was doing that, and then and during the day, uh, for about a couple weeks, I did Barb Wire. But um, my, originally my part was bigger in Barbed Wire, but then Rifkin got replaced by another director, and, and he didn't use me as much. But you know, I understand that it was okay. Yeah, I've heard stories. Was of, she was not. Pam was not. She was a sweet girl. It yeah. was all during that whole Tommy Lee and her and the sex you know, tape and all that. It was, yeah, it was a big controversy, but I thought it was funny. You know, so uh, this was real. And I knew Tommy from heaven. Mm-hmm. I met him when we were doing the swap thing, so it was like, you know, every movie I do is going to be married to Tommy Lee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you guest starred on your sister's show, Married with Children, a few times. Uh, was that always uh, fun? Oh, uh, yeah. That was fun. That was good. I can't complain. Yeah, I remember uh, one of those times. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not, I'm not I, I, you know, I prefer on TV to doing sitcoms or things like that, but it was fun. It was a good time. It was the only sitcom I ever did. Yeah, I remember cool. one, one of those times you were like the owner of a cabin resort and... Uh, yeah, Randolph the innkeeper. Randolph the innkeeper, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you tell Alan yeah. Jefferson to leave and then they pee on that sign. <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Donna Co. and the other guy were like my assistant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good. You mentioned before... Yeah, yeah. What's that? I was going to say, you mentioned before about uh, working with Andrew Dice Clay on whatever it takes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what was, it, what was it like working with him? Oh, very nice guy, man. You know, he right away made him feel like a friend. And he was a very nice guy. I've heard he's a very nice guy, and he's not like that character he plays. No, not at all. At all. He, he's, he's kind of a, almost like a, a, a shy a little bit. And, and, and you know, he said, you know do, I said, dude, do you want to call you Andy or... Guys, or what? He goes, you can just call me Andrew. You know, that's my name. You know, he was kind of like totally opposite of that guy. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of these people, those people are like. I also, uh, you know, with a lot of comedians, uh, Steve Martin is the same one. You know, nothing like the Robin Crazy guy. Yeah. Super intelligent, you know, knows exactly what he's doing, you know, very well uh, I've heard he's a nice person. I've heard he's an intellectual type of guy. Oh, my God. Yeah, completely. You know, he wrote a play like the cop. Einstein that I was in, very intelligent, made a ton of money off of paintings, has, uh, has a really great uh, uh, knowledge of art, literature, and mm-hmm. music. What's, what's the genesis behind Elvis and Nixon? Um, oh, well, yeah, that's a long story. But originally, <laughs> I was going to play Elvis. I played Elvis, I did a Stephen King miniseries, plays, I did um, impersonators, that was kind of my go-to role. And the producer of the Captain Elways had been at my wedding at the time. And I, we had talked about, I told the story, and I said, we should do this movie. And he greenlit it at my wedding um, uh, as a wedding present to uh, my, my ex-wife. We, we, you know, we did uh, stay married. And um, originally, I was going to play Elvis, and it was going to be a low-budget movie, and uh, it's going to be a break for me. And then... Uh, his brother, Dr. Valkyrie, always, who at the time was my friend for about 30 years. Mm-hmm. And um, he just became incensed with the, the cast. He was trying to help me and not help him. And he got super jealous. And he tried to uh, uh, kind of take the script. He, he, he insisted that he write a scene. And then he tried, tried to get a lawyer because he tried to steal my script. And he was thinking, I, but the movie got done, but uh, uh, I would never talk always again and he, he kind of because of him he uh, you know he's the, he's the actor that played the princess bride not a very nice person oh. he, uh, he said that uh, you know I should be playing Elvis 
Judge, Vice Judge, we'll judge us played all this on stage and this and that. And, and then eventually he got me an ax from playing all this in that party. And uh, it, it, it still is to this day, I'm a little bit uh, hurt by that. And uh, Michael, the first we got here, Dan, I, I knew I knew we could get other actors there because, you know, there's they're two great parts. Elvis and Nixon, you're going to get you know, most, most big stars at the time would be getting offer maybe the same five parts, you know, the bad guy, the good guy, whatever. You know, these were great parts. <laughs> and so anyway, mm -hmm. ended up going to Shannon and we were Kevin Smith and Nixon. And I was okay with it. I I did a scene, you know, I got one scene in it. And, uh, of course, I got, you know, I wrote the screenplay. So, um, you know, it, it, there's a lot of mixed feelings on that one for me. Yeah, that I, I mean that's unfortunate. It's kind that, of my Rocky that got away. I always felt that you know it's a little bit yeah, a little bit upset about that. But you know what can we do? And then Karma came right back to me because right when that all happened, I got cast as George Clooney in a a, a lead part in kind of a spoof of Ocean's Eleven. It was like mm. they took this part away from me, and then in three months I was given a really great part that you know was really fun to play. Yeah. Well, that's unfortunate that you didn't get to play Elvis, though, but uh, I know that you've uh, been an Elvis fan your whole life, but it's good that you got to, uh, you know, be a part of something like this. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. It was great It was great that I got to be a part. I wanted to play Elvis, but it got taken away, and, you know, there was a lot of bullshit politics, but, you know, with show business. Yeah. It seems to me... Uh, Nixon was kind of the, the Trump of the 70s, and people didn't know why, you know, people like Elvis and Sam Davis Jr. would endorse him. And then when Watergate out happened, everyone was like, see, we told you, you know, and it seemed, yeah. it seems like oh, yeah. in this pandemic we're having, it's the same scenario. Well, I agree. You know, there, there are parallels. Um, that's what was great about the project, you know. And it was also because they both are just influenced. Me. I was both in the seventies, and they were like the two most influential characters to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I one I loved, one I hated. You know, yeah, uh, I loved one that hated Nixon, uh, but they also were these two characters that I felt as an actor, as a writer, would be so interesting to put in a room together, just because of the way they talk. Mm -hmm. so, you know, nobody has vocal patterns like these two guys. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you know that was one of the, the main uh, reasons for doing Elvis and Nixon was I really wanted to uh, just get those two characters in a row. It would be great. They're mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. So do you have any uh, upcoming projects after quarantine? Um, I, got a, I just played Michael Bloomberg in a movie called Bad President. Mm -hmm. It's uh, been cut right now, but hopefully it will turn out good. they got Stormy Daniels in it, and it's got uh, Eddie Griffin. And nice. uh, that's just about it right now. I'm just trying to get some more work and uh, hanging out, just quarantining. Is, is that going to yeah. yeah. Is that gonna be a theatrical or a streaming movie? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. It's a low budget. And uh, he uh, asked me to do it. Um, and so I said, yeah, of course. I'll do it. I'll do that audition. I said, great. Awesome. And, you know. We'll see. I don't know. I have no idea. It was a pretty good script. You just, you never know what's going to happen. These things. Yeah. <laughs> you certainly have seen it. Yeah, yeah. It could turn out great, or it could turn out on the editing floor and never get released. You never know. Mm -hmm. Well, Joey, I thank you so much for coming on today, and I hope right, you... Oh, great. And, and can you send me a copy of this? Oh, of course. I'll, 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 I'll text you my email address. Oh, yeah, that'll be great. And um, I hope you st uh, stay safe during this crazy time and that yeah, you return to work after this is over, hopefully soon. Me too. So you're not to God's ears. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Joey, thank you and have a great day. Thank you, brother. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Joey Seagal. Ain't he a cool dude? Oh, very nice guy comes from, you know, Hollywood royalty, but he's a very nice guy, and he's been there. I like talking to him a lot. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube